So let me quickly introduce myself. I am Mohamed Fakhouri. I uh, work as a researcher at University of Applied Sciences in Stuttgart. I am part of Urban Geoinformatics uh, Lab. And uh, we are focusing on our work on uh, 3D visualization and augmented and extended reality in general and in the purpose for urban planning. So today, alongside with my colleague, Juan Sardi, we will present some of our works and also like a quick tutorial how to get started with the, with the WebXR why we are interested in, in public participation in general. So we are focusing on that in our research to, in order to achieve and to meet the, the community needs and also like to engage citizens. So in a lot of the process, especially in the air planning process, we want to have the opinion of everyone that who are involved or affected by some changes that we, we will make or we are planning to make in such an areas and in order also like to achieve some transparency in what we are doing. So. Typically, this process will be carried on by like surveys and like showing some drawings, as you can see. But what is the added benefit of having like uh, an augmented reality or a virtual reality solution that we can? Next slide, please. So, so for example, we can visualize a more complex scenarios. If you are speaking about 3D buildings and 3D uh, design scenarios, then we will have that option to visualize it more, which is. If you want to make like conventional or like physical intervention in the in such an area, that would be like more expensive, and also it will uh, it will take some time like to to have it to set it up. But in, in this case, we can have like a, a scenario, and then people and different people can test it out, and then we can collect feedback on that after. So we can we focusing on also collecting the feedback, and as as I said, so everyone can test it out. Uh, if they are like on site or if they are like testing a virtual reality scenario, they don't need to be to be there. Uh, so in our project, ICT Street uh, Street for Moves, we are focusing on one specific area in Stuttgart city. It's in the middle of the uh, Stuttgart. So one street uh, that is only used to serve like a parking garage that was planned to be de demolished, and I think it's demolished this year as well. So we are visualizing a different scenario. So as I can see it here in these images, we are showing what if we have like a, a less car environment by visualizing some greeny grasses uh, in the scene. Then the user will have the chance like to go inside and test it out, have a walk, and give us a feedback what they feel about that, what are their acceptance rate on this uh, idea in general. Uh, for sure, we are also tackling some uh, some uh, technical issue. For example, one issue that you see here, it's with occlusion. So how the, the digital object will appear and interact with the real life object as they are part of it. So if we go behind uh, one building uh, and we have like a, a digital tree or a 3D model of a tree, that model of a tree should be hidden because we are not ob obtaining the line of sight in this case. So in this issue, we were, we were uh, tackling it with uh, using 3D CT GML model as a mask alongside with the real-time scanning data for a small object as well. So another work that we also do in the city of Fellbach, which is like near adjacent city to the city of Stuttgart, where we are also presenting a, a more interactive as well, where the user have the chance to, to add a different, uh, different element and different trees and basically design their own version of the scenario that uh, they want to see. So one case study here we have it, it's, uh, it's an intersection and we propose the roundabout design and then people have the choice to add what they think about it as a text feedback or even vote for specific item that they like the most. But, but typically most of this solution, it's becoming so hard to implement. So for example, if you want to change the, uh, the case area or if some municipality want to have a, a similar solution, Typically, it's very complicated and it's need a resources in terms of hardware and software also to implement it. So what we are proposing now, what we, what we can do with the simple phones and just using the web XR with no need to install any application, just log into our website, then you will have your 3D model ready and you can visualize it with AR as well. So we will just make use of the onboard on uh, IMU of the device itself, like with a gyroscope as well. And with a, with a camera, we can render a 3D model also. And as I said, since it's very simple, so some basic knowledge of, for example, like web development, including HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, alongside with a server, which I will add a link here where you can 
use our, also our university server, so no need for dedicated server. So basically, it's part of HFT GitLab pages that you can use, and for sure a smartphone. So unfortunately, now WebXR is not supported by Apple Safari. I don't know why, but hopefully it will be. So this link you can, you can scan, and then you will have access to more detailed tutorial on like how to go step by step, what the codes that you need, and how to create account also in HFT, get pages. So I will just keep it for a bit so you can have a, an image of that. So I, I will not go into detail how to follow this tutorial or how to program in HTML, but I will just show some, yes, so if you follow the link, you should be, you will land here basically, and here you have all the information that you need including the server setup. So this is a simple web, ser uh, web server, but the most important things that you need it to support HTTPS, so the secure connection. And then we can start with creating a simple cube. So we are building our own 3D model in, in this case. And we will use the, the three JavaScript library for the 3D rendering as well. And then we will just finally render the scene using the camera live feed. So this is some result that you can expect and you can do by following this tutorial. So on the first one on the left side, you can see we have, we built a cube with a different uh, color faces. So this cube, we can fix it in one part and it will stay there with no interaction from us. And in this tutorial as well, here you can see in the results, we have an option to, to place a specific or a uh, user defined 3D model and we can place it wherever we want and in the number that, that we want it to be. So, and now I will leave you with my colleague to present his part. Thank you very much, Mohamed. Yeah, uh, good morning with everyone. My name is Juan Sardi. And yes, I will talk about a little bit more in depth about the possibilities of use of the extended reality technologies into urban planning and design. Specifically, the use of mixed reality technologies and BIMS semantic and rigid geometry can offer us the possibility of first an improvement on the communication uh, between the planning side, the professionals, and the community side of or the users. And second, it can also offer us uh, a better understanding between, between these two sides uh, about what is about the project. So, next one, please. Yeah, historically, uh, engineers, architects, and designers have been using different methods of abstraction of ideas to explain their projects, uh, such as sketching or... Um, next one, please. And next one. Yeah using uh, different methods of uh, abstraction of ideas, such as uh, catching physical modeling and more recently uh, 3D modeling and rendering. But uh, the difficulty of this is that each one of these methods of abstraction can bring errors or misunderstandings on the projects, especially in the phase of the, the beginning of the project where the ideas are becoming to be created. So what used to happen is what used to happen is that the, the professionals bring a project proposal, then the community checks them, and then the community usually they show what are the requirements. And here comes the problem about the interpretation of the professionals, which have to bring this interpretation into the manual transferring of the, of the necessity of the, of the community to the BIM software or, the, or to the drawing software for then becoming like a, a cyclical project, a process where uh, there is a lot of losing on, of time and especially miscommunication. It's hard to, to understand what is the real problem and what is the, the real or the real necessity that uh, it's needed on the project. So in, with HFT, with HFT of Stuttgart, we have developed a mixed reality uh, prototype application uh, which the aim is to, to provide a one-to-one -one scale on-site design experience and also uh, one 
um, the possibility to have on-site feedback and discussion about the ideas of one project. And as a result of this, or as an extra um, aim of this application that was developed, uh, we tried to transfer all of this discussion of ideas or these new uh, ideas that came up into the, the discussion directly back to the BIM or drawing or modeling software in order to optimize the process about uh, the whole development of the project. So what we did is uh, basically was to bring information from building information, modeling software, to mixed reality, to make a discussion, to, to make improvements or just changes or just understand on the real side the, the project solution, and then to bring all, those, all of these changes back to BIM, uh, maintaining all the modification capabilities, all, all the addition capabilities of BIM software. Uh, and here in the right, we have a little bit of a, a workflow that was used. And it used uh, eight steps, basically, where there were involved. Uh, I cannot go through all of them, but it, it basically, it used um, a pre-scanning of, of the environment, then use uh, game engine technology to, to make the link between BIM and mixed reality technologies, and then uh, use, um, in this case, authoring software such as uh, Autodesk Revit to, to bring back the, the information from mixed reality to, to the BIM software. So what we can see now, it's, please put play to the video. Yeah. It's a demo about the application running into the headset um, called uh, Microsoft HoloLens 2. Here is an example about uh, how can the application be used for um, cases of urban planning or urban design on real side. On the upper uh, right corner, you can see the exterior view, what all the people view with the, the, the person or the designer using the headset, just <laughs> playing on the air. But in reality, what's happening, it's about uh, what we can see on the left um, down corner where the designer can start playing with, the, with the, um, all the possibilities on the design, specifically taking into consideration the input that the real context can bring to us. And one of the advantages of this is to having the real scale of, of the objects and the, what we have in all the context uh, around us. And yeah, you can play it again, please. So, yeah, and meanwhile, everything this is happening on real side, uh, also the possibility of having these changes that were discussed with the, with the users or with the community uh, can be sent back directly to BIM software, which is uh, here in the right, uh, right le uh, down corner. And you can see how all the changes that are made on the left are synchronized and sent back to BIM. The interesting thing of this is that we can preserve the, the, the capabilities of the BIM geometry to be modified and to be kept into the, the regular BIM modeling process.